When he was about 30, artist Joe Simhart was looking for creative and spiritual transformation. He ended up taking a detour that turned into a lifelong mission. Since the 1980s, he's been helping people break free of religious cults. For Simhart, it's not just a job, it's personal. Here he is. Personally, I was in this cult, Church Universal and Triumphant, for about a year and a half, and when I got out, I realized you know, there's something really wrong here. I was also really pissed off that I had fallen for something so ridiculous. There's this woman that ascended beings or gods and goddesses or angels speak through, like Buddha, Saint Germain, Virgin Mary, all speaking through her in a trance on stage. So it sounds comical, but there were three or four thousand people at these conferences that I went to totally believing in this was real, and you get kind of swept up in it. My first wife told me, You're, when you came back from that, you weren't the same person you were when you left. She decided to divorce me based on the fact that I just was this crazy person that was capitulating to a cult. From my point of view, I thought, it's good, I'd have changed, because I needed to change. Now, I wasn't totally believing in it. I saw conflicts in it. I could still think. For instance, you weren't allowed to wear black, you weren't allowed to wear brown, you shouldn't wear checkered colors. They were evil colors that would bring down the vibration of your body. And so here I am, a portrait artist, and I was in conflict. How do I do a pure portrait of someone and not make it look like a cartoon? What happens with a cult like this is they up the ante. What's very pure and spiritual, which is what the, 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 the goal is, makes everything else look bad. So, you know, normal sex is bad, normal diet is bad, normal television is bad. So it's a, it's a self-sealing system which uh, explains what you should think and how you should think. And for that reason, a lot of people, even though they don't like being in these groups, won't leave because to think your way out of this, which you have to do, you can't just walk away, is not an easy task. Some people get suicidal over it. Um, you know, you, you lose your identity, you don't know who you are. It was a struggle for me to get out psychologically. I mean, it really was nights of panic, wondering if I was right or wrong, what was real, what was not real. I, I knew this nun, and I said, I don't know what to do. So she said, well, let me pray with you. <laughs> so she starts doing this prayer. And I just started crying. And I felt this release. I didn't have this veil of conflict anymore. I was working from anger at myself. I was angry that I had wasted time. I was angry I had spent money on it. Angry that I had uh, betrayed my, you know, my two, three-year-old daughter at the time with this stuff. Um, I was ready to leave her. You know, I mean, that thought had entered my mind. I can't conceive of that now, but, but it was there. I did try to put this behind me, walk away from it, and get my art career going again. And, and uh, some of the people in the group wondered why I quit. And I talked to them. I sat down with them for a few hours, and lo and behold, they quit. And then I started getting a reputation for being good at this. And before I knew it, I had a career, this maverick career of being a deprogrammer or exit counselor. I've easily done over 500 interventions. It doesn't always work, but I like the challenge of uh, going into a, a, a case where families distraught because someone has left them for a cult and trying to help them bring that back together again through intervention. Uh, the challenge of just talking to someone and then drawing them out. It's a life-changing event. You're witnessing right in front of your eyes a life-changing event take place. But I think what drives me most is just an incredible uh, interest in why human beings do these things and, and how influence and deception work. It's part of the adventure of the great debate about what, what is life all about and uh, how do we make meaning out of it. I'm still searching. I don't think that ends. Um, I think that's part of being human. You know, one of my old art teachers told me uh, that when you're approaching a painting, you have to dare to be lousy. That's part of the uh, fun of exploring these great ideas is that, that you, you have to recognize that sometimes your ideas are just going to be really lousy and you've got to reconsider again.